So having looked at different ways of washing color over the entire image, we're going to look at a different technique for inserting colors into a very narrow range of tonality. And this is a completely different way that we can create a sense of occasion for an image to create a creative look. So first off, I'm going to jump into my color menu and I'm going to reset this whole shot. Because instead of doing a color wash, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a color insertion, what I like to refer to as an undertone. So to start out with, let's go ahead and first create the primary grade that we want. So for the shot, I want to have nice solid shadows, but I want a smooth ramp to black. So instead of just creating one massive S curve that flattens out my shadows, I'm going to be a little more deliberate in terms of creating a smoother curve towards black. And in this way, creating this kind of a gentler curve, I'm able to have a smoother transition. I'm able to preserve a lot of subtle detail that might otherwise get lost by the image just getting smushed. Now having done that, because I'm using my curves, I've boosted my saturation. Maybe I don't want that much saturation. I'll bring that down a little bit. Maybe I'm unhappy with how much sky I've lost. So I'm just going to quickly go into hue versus saturation. I'm going to select both the cyan and the blue and jack all of that up to see if there's anything I can retrieve. There's a little bit. And as an added bonus, I get a little more green there and that's okay. So let's just say that's my primary look. Now I want to do something a little bit special. So I add another node. And there are a few different methods I can use to insert color. Firstly, one thing I can do is to use the curves. So one technique I like to use is to hold the shift key down and click on any one of the curves while it is in ganged mode. And you can see whether you're ganged by clicking this little option pop up and you can see gang custom curves is checked. And I'm going to go ahead and add three control points by shift clicking, shift click, shift click. And what I'm doing is I'm isolating a range of middle upper shadow tonality. And having done that, I am now going to ungang these curves. And now what I can do is by playing around with those curves, you can see I can actually start tinting a very narrow range of the image in different ways. So if I want to go for kind of a green tint, I can set that up very quickly. And if I turn this node off and on, you can see exactly what I'm doing. It's not an overall wash. It's a very selective color insertion. Similarly, if that's not what I'm going for, I can pump up the blues. Maybe that's a look that I want. I'll drop my red. So again, I'm definitely altering the tone of the image, but I'm preserving a lot more of the original color and I'm creating a more sophisticated stylization. So this is one way I can go. Let's take a look at another image. I've got these two girls here sitting on a bench and I want to give them more of a more of a look. So give them a bit more shadow. I'll drag some of that mid-tone down. Maybe I'll even cool this image off. It's meant to be a cold wintry day. So right there and then 
I've taken this into a very distinct direction, but I want to take it even farther. Now, another way that I can insert color is by going ahead and using the log tools. So I'm going to switch into log mode. Now, the shadow, midtone, and highlight log ranges have been designed to work with logarithmically encoded media for film workflows, and that's great. But by sheer coincidence, they also happen to be very restrictive bands of tonality. So, for example, if I use the midtone control to add a bunch of blue, if I really jam it, you can see that that blue is being added to a very thin band of the image. And in fact, I can control how thin that band is using the high range and the low range controls. So you can see I can roll back the high range so that blue is restricted just to the darker parts of the image. Similarly, I can raise the low range to restrict this color insertion to exclude more and more of the shadows. This also affects my fall off. Now, of course, what I'm doing here is really, really, really stylized. But if I roll back, you can see that I can cool off a wedge of shadows. And the advantage is here, I'm leaving my darkest parts of the image alone. Now, I'm going to reset this. No, well, actually, I'm not going to reset this because you'll observe I applied this look in node one, which isn't quite what I wanted to do. I'm going to copy the node. So select node one, press command C, select node two, press command V. And then back in node one, I'm going to reset all of the log controls. And in node two, I'm going to reset all of my lift gamma gain controls, as well as this curve. So now I've taken what I accidentally munged together into one single node, and I've spread them out amongst two different nodes, so I can turn node two on and off and show you what I've gotten here. Again, I can do something fairly light, and maybe you'd look at this image and you wouldn't obviously say, oh my gosh, he's inserted blue. But when I turn it off, you can see I'm actually doing quite a bit, and yet I'm still retaining nice, dark, solid shadows. I'm still retaining most of the original color of the image. I'm just giving it a, a light dusting of flare, one might say. Now we're going to take a look at one additional technique for doing color insertions. And this is perhaps the oldest method of doing this type of look because it uses a tool that's been around for many, many generations of different grading applications, the Luma qualifier. So moving to the next clip, I can see this clip is automatically linked to another clip. I'm going to right click and choose copy remote grades to local because I want all of these clips to be individual and I'm just going to rip through the rest of this timeline using local grades. Firstly, I'm going to reset all grades and nodes, get back to the way this clip was originally. And first off, of course, I always like to say you want to build a good look on top of a solid primary. If I turn gang custom curves back on, I'm going to goose I'm going to goose my contrast a little bit. One thing I find I often do, even when I'm creating just a, a moderate subtle S-curve, is I find I often add one more control point down in between the lower of the S points. Uh, one more point down below so I can just get a little more solidity out of those shadows if what I'm going for is a nice solid high contrast look. We'll take a look at some other things you can do with contrast in a little bit, uh, but this is just another little tidbit I find I do often that seemed worth mentioning. Now that I have this set up, I'm going to create another serial node, and we're going to go into the qualifier palette. 
And in particular, we're going to go into the loom mode of the qualifier palette. And in the loom mode, if I turn on my highlight, I can go ahead and adjust to isolate a specific band of image tonality. So if I want to leave out the darkest shadows and leave out the brightest highlights, I can see exactly what I'm including and omitting by whatever is left in color. And in fact, as I do this, I'm probably going to want to use the softness controls to achieve a nice roll off. I don't necessarily want this color insertion to be super harsh. But once I've done that, I can turn my highlight selection off. And now I can use any of the color controls to push a tint or a wash into the image. So if I push up towards red, you can see that now I have a very specific red insertion. If I want to push this down towards green, I want to accomplish that cinema look. This is a way that I can set that up. And it's perhaps a little more flexible than using the curves. I can just dial in whatever color I want. And in fact, because I'm doing such a narrow insertion, once I pick a hue, I can rotate that hue around to fine tune it to get just the flavor of olive drab green that I want for this particular look. Again, if I toggle this node off and on, you can see I'm just adding a very subtle wash. And in fact, if I wanted to go farther and I wanted to omit that sky, it's a simple thing to combine this qualifier with a custom curve. So that the intersection of the curve and the power window is all that gets affected. And now I've omitted the sky. Color insertions. So there you go. Three different methods of doing color insertions or undertones, as I like to call them.